Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and my grandson and I are down here doing some fishing. And it's about 100 degrees actual temperature. I don't even know what the heat index is, but it is hot. And I'm thinking, man, would it be nice to have some shade down here. Now, I've been planning to build a pergola, and I've already got most of the materials ready. I was going to build the pergola up by the koi pond, but now I'm thinking, why not put it down here so that he can fish and I can sit in the shade and watch him. And so I'm trying to scout out the best location. So one of our most popular areas is here where the bridge is at and the windmill. I need to weed eat that, but otherwise that's a spot where everyone likes to kind of hang out. Then we do most of our fishing over here on this bank because I've got some chairs over there and some pole holders. So I want to shade one of those two areas. And I'm thinking, you know, the sun is usually offset that way a little bit in the evening. So thinking we want it maybe back away from the pond, 20 feet or something, so that in the evening that shadow will cast onto us and we can sit right along the bank. And while I was talking to you, he caught this little guy. And it's perfect for bait. It is exactly the right size for catfish bait. And yes, in Kansas, we can usually legally use this as bait. So he's going after that big catfish while I'm working. I do this quite a bit where I come down here with the plan that Zayden's going to fish and I'm going to do something else and I'll help him when he needs it. Boy, that turns out to be more time consuming than I thought. So he's six now. He can put his bait on the hook. He can catch the fish, reel it in. He can take the fish off the hook and throw it back in, but he can't undo tangles and he has a tendency to get the end of the line all twisted around his pole and then try to reel it instead of fixing it. So, plus he fishes with more than one pole at a time. <laughs> he uses the little pole and he's got at least one big pole in there trying to get that catfish. So I end up tying a lot of knots. Now what we've got here is the pergola kit that this entire thing is based on. These are the bottom feet. So put a six by six into here. Well, of course, first you pour concrete, which is what we're about to do. Then you bolt this to the concrete with some of this hardware. Then you put your six by six in and you screw it in from the sides and that's your vertical supports. Okay, this one is the same as that one. So we have four boxes this size. I'm going to say those are all the same. And ugh, we got two boxes like this. Now I looked at possibly getting a full pergola kit that comes with the lumber and everything you need. I said, no, I didn't get a sawmill because I wanted to buy lumber. So I was, okay, I'll just build the whole thing myself. Well, that was a thought, but I ended up not going that way. I was thinking no matter what I do, even if I mill all the lumber myself, I'm gonna have to buy hardware. The lag bolts, you know, whatever L brackets, whatever method you use to hold the thing together. That's where this comes in. This replaces all other hardware. It's gonna make it a lot stronger than the way I was thinking of doing it. So this will slide over your vertical six by six, put the top of it flush here, then your other six by sixes, your sideways, or your, your top, I don't know what you'd call them, like the beams that go across the top to form the square on top, go in here and they screw in the same way. So what this kit consists of is four of these that go on the top and four feet that go on the bottom. Should make it a lot stronger. So this is called a pergola kit, but really what it does is it builds you a basic square frame of a structure, and you could put a regular roof on it if you wanted, but what I'm going to do is an actual pergola, and I think this was a pretty reasonably priced kit. I'll put a link in the description of this video to where you can order one of these same kits that I have. They have it in a 6x6 or a 4x4, depending on what size lumber you want to use. I've also got a discount code where you can save money off your order by using my code, and I'll put that in the description and the pinned comment. 
All right, let's get our spot marked out and get started with the concrete. I have my nice little Hustler hat. See if that cools it off any. It is just incredibly hot out here. First thing I need to do is mark four corners for this. We'll do two corners 12 foot apart for a 12 by 12. And then from there, it takes a bunch of measurements diagonally to get your next two points. Okay, so each of those flags is 12 feet apart. But now it's a matter of trying to get a diagonal from one corner and then a diagonal the other way that gets within an inch or two of the same measurement. We don't need exact today, right this minute, because all we're doing is making a hole, then we'll pour concrete in the hole, and then we need to center the post exactly, and the holes will be oversized. That's what I was afraid of. We're 212 one way, 198 the other way. Since this way is shorter, we need to make this longer by taking these two spots and moving them that way. If we had a difference of 14 inches, in theory, it seems like we should be moving each of these two flags seven inches that way. Okay, that gave me 203 and 205. And I'm using the backhoe to dig, so these holes are gonna be oversized enough that I'm not gonna be able to even tell exactly where it was. So I think that's close enough for us to start digging. I really debated the best way to dig these holes. I've got an auger up there, and I think it's six inch or it could be nine inch, but I don't think that would give me a big enough circle for the concrete. Um, those, those feet on my post stick out past the six by six, and then you'd be drilling your tap cons or whatever kind of uh, anchor they use, you'd be drilling those right into the edge of the concrete and that doesn't seem like it would work. I think you need the, the base, the footprint of it to be 12 or 15 inches diagonal across. And so that leaves me with using the backhoe or doing it by hand. Feels like with the backhoe, if you want a, a hole that size, it's not gonna be very deep before you start widening it out and you have this big cone shape. And a cone in concrete lifts out too easy. Um, so what I've been leaning towards is I'm going to dig the initial hole with the backhoe, the size I want it, and I may use the post hole digger manual to go a little deeper if I need to. So let's see how it goes. I asked my buddy Brad from Piney Grove, you know, should I put the post hole auger on or should I use the backhoe? He said, neither. Do it by hand. I about fell out of my chair. But to be fair, you know, he's older and lives in a nice climate like Florida, so it'd be easier, I think. Is it hot in Florida? One trick I've learned before but I forgot to do is now, after I dig my hole, I won't lose track of where the middle of it was. Over there, I've got a hole that stretches from here to here and I don't know where that center was. So I'm going to do that on all the holes now, remeasure and make some side marks over here. Based on the measurements I just took, the center of this hole should be here instead of up here. So I'm going to have to come back and dig out this way just a little bit more, and then this hole will be way oversized.
So for me, all this conversation is about trying to figure out the best way to do things. And I said that I think the auger that I have isn't big enough. And I could have maybe went and got a 12 inch auger that might have worked, but my tractor has a little bit of trouble powering the, the auger I have. It would probably run a 12 inch, but I decided not to find out today. So the hole we have here is 13 inches. And if you go all the way out, it's 55 inches. But I think what I'll do is put a big rock inside of here on each side to kind of frame that in. Because what I'd like to have, you know, is a hole that's only half this wide, like 18 inches or something. And we're about 22 inches deep right here. This is going to do the trick, but without these rocks, it would waste a lot of concrete. Now, if I can get a big rock and put down in here, then I can pack dirt in behind it and not use as much concrete. I'd like to have a time machine about now so I could go back and find Brock from three months ago and just slap him across the face for not putting these bags of concrete on a pallet. First, the bottom bags are probably have had moisture wick up into them and, and ruin them and harden them in the bag. And second, why am I stacking these 80 pound bags twice? So I was thinking these holes needed to be big to cover the footprint, but I was thinking they need to be deep so there's a lot of weight. But without a solid roof on this, it's not going to catch much air. I didn't need holes nearly this big. So we got a few negatives here. First, I was thinking I was going to dig a hole that would take like four bags, and I put 12 in here. Second, the rest of the bags on the pallet are bad. They're hard as a rock. So I only had enough concrete for one hole. Next thing is, it seems like everybody on YouTube is doing dry pour, and I've mixed my concrete my whole life. And so now I don't trust this. And most of the dry pours I'm seeing are to hold up a post with one or two bags. This is deeper. It's more... I'm worried it's not going to work as well, and I'm not putting a post in it, I'm drilling into it. So now I'm wondering, is this dry pour going to give me that same structural integrity that I would get from mixed concrete? So I'm going to soak this down, and then use this as a test to see how it comes out, and then make my decision on the other three holes. So I say it all the time, but if you guys have any experience, with uh, doing what I'm doing here, using a dry pour like this, or any other information you'd like to add about how I should move on from here, I'd be glad to hear it. I tend to make mistakes all through my process and then end up with a finished product that is exactly the way I want it. Because you just adapt to whatever goes wrong and you learn from it. And usually, I feel like I can always course correct in the middle and make it come out all right. And worst case scenario, I fill those holes back in, I move this whole thing over five feet, I dig four new holes, and I've got this one concrete patch that will be a reminder of how I messed up. <laughs> and grass will grow over it and it'll be fine. But anyway, enough talking. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.